Hello, wonderful people. Let me check uh, uh, how the quality and the sound and so on. Uh, let me know, please, uh, if you can hear me, if you can see me and the quality of picture is good. Um, meantime, let me check uh, if, if the connection on my part is good. Uh, Phil, greetings to you too. Hey, people, I'm, I'm having problem this morning with my audio. Uh, let me know if it works fine now, okay? Because I had to connect like four times, four times, uh, just uh, to be able to, you know, to get that short video. Uh, yes, it is live, and uh, I really do appreciate people uh, who connects it. David, good to see you. John, good to see you. Uh, all good. Great. So let me jump to the subject. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm working on, I'm still working on the same project. Uh, there's a small details. It's going to be paint. Uh, it's going to be painted with uh, chalk paint, which is, uh, in this case, this piece. It's already, I've got the first coat of chalk paint. That's going to be some more coats. And another piece, this one is just the first coat of primer. Uh, it's going to be white, of course. And uh, if you first time on my channel, let me explain what I'm doing. Okay, I'm working on a big project, a Venetian style project. And that is just the one panel of that project. My apologies for those uh, cutouts. I use that as a template. And most of you who's watching me, you already know that uh, that project is uh, uh, for the whole room. And let's say this piece goes right in that spot. Okay, that is a panel. I'm gonna have some moldings. And if you look below, there's a couple rosettes. If you don't know what the rosettes gonna look like, just watch some of my previous videos on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch. So you should be able to see that. Anyway, this piece goes right there, <laughs> okay? So that is uh, another piece on the same panel. And obviously, the third one, small flowers, they go like that. And I still have to do some more, like a lower part of that panel, which is not that complicated. So let me show you from above how it looks. And meantime, while you see it, I'm going to check uh, if the connection is good. Wonderful people. And I hope uh, uh, on a Facebook people also able to see. But that is how it goes. Okay, so that is how it goes. Now let me get that away. And let me get to the subject of uh, today's video. Now, all wood carvers including myself, we really like undercutting. For those of you who don't know what is uh, undercutting, is actually, uh, if you look from above, if you look from above, uh, there's a, some shadow, and I hope you can catch that shadow. See, it's casting on my bench, you know, there's a deep shadow on that side. There are some shadows. And to create those shadows, uh, we actually undercut, you know, right underneath of the uh, carving. So wood carving, by no means, I, I think it's uh, all about the lights and a shadow. Even if it's a paint grate, I still create those shadows. Couple approaches, uh, you can do that. The simple approach, just to attack that from a, uh, uh, you know, from above, let's say, uh, whatever the method of uh, connecting you have, so you can just probably just uh, uh, 
create that undercut with the knife or gouge and so on. But the better idea uh, to flip that piece upside down, okay, and uh, attack that from a uh, back side. So, and that's called back cutting. So, but the problem is when you place that on a bench and if the pieces are really fragile, it does have some uh, pedals, you can break them, okay? So, a couple ways we can approach and uh, solve that problem. Number one, we have to stabilize it. I mean, those pedals at least, we have to stabilize it. And to stabilize it, we have to use uh, some kind of, you know, chemical stuff, okay? Uh, I know multiple ways, but the three ways or three methods probably the best. Before we flip that piece, we have to penetrate with something, okay? Number one, you can use just, you know, trusty tie bond, uh, wood glue. It doesn't have to be tie bond brand, but any wood glue will work. Any, any uh, glue will work, okay? So in my case, I really like the tie bond. But what you do with that? Uh, you actually dilute that 50-50 uh, uh, with the water, okay? So that is what I have, just dilute it. And brush it on, okay? What happens, uh, it sucks, I mean, it penetrates inside uh, those resins, they go inside of the fibers and it becomes uh, more like a resin-like, okay? It's not going to be resin-resin, but it's still going to be more stable. That method is good. But that method is good only, only if you're not planning to stain. But if you're planning to stain, use some type of stain or uh, dye, it's not going to work because tie bond, you know, you're not going to be able to stain it nicely. So there's supposed to be another solution. Okay, let me show you another solution, also not for the staining. And another solution would be I'm using... Uh, super glue okay and in my case I use a super glue uh, it doesn't have to be that brand I'm using star bond super glue and this uh, is a really thin super glue uh, let me show you that little closer to you you hopefully gonna see that that is a star bond brand okay super glue and what you do you just penetrate it's really liquidy I mean you can probably catch that on the camera it's really really liquidy and you uh, just uh, put all around and it just penetrates and it makes it stable it makes it really stable pretty much uh, it's a, one of my favorite favorite uh, methods again if you're not planning to stain okay if uh, for the paint grade it's wonderful for the furniture it's wonderful uh, there's uh, some uh, doubts uh, let's say tie bond versus uh, uh, super glue uh, tie bond gonna last you a lot longer not tie bond wood glue gonna last you a lot longer uh, super glue the lifespan of the super glue I think it's about five years maybe it's better now I'm not sure uh, five years so even if I love that it's not the best way uh, to stabilize wood uh, but what do we do what do we do if uh, we really have to do a staining and there's another solution uh, in my case I use a wood hardener doesn't have to be that brand I'm not selling anything I'm not uh, sponsored by anyone I'm just telling you what I'm using uh, in this case I'm using uh, you know that stuff that brand and that's a wood hardener made for the you'd be surprised for the rotten wood for the outside pretty much it smells like uh, some types of uh, wood glue also but it penetrates really deeply on inside and dries really quickly I, I penetrate twice sometimes three times but after that stuff you're still able to stain it okay and it's stable so again in my case i'm using this brand uh, it does not have to be that brand so stabilize is step number one step number two 
we really still have to flip it. And it's not safe to flip it on a bench. You create the pressure, or you're gonna break those pedals. And they really tiny pedals. We're we talking about the really, really thin, uh, tiny pedals. So what do you do? Okay. So uh, I'm some people using uh, like uh, bench dogs, or I'm sorry, it's not bench dogs. It's a uh, bench cookies by the bench <laughs> dogs or bench dog tools. Uh, doesn't have to be that brand. Uh, I do have some Rockler, I do have some uh, uh, Bench Dog tools, but uh, those are just the cookies. You place them right on your bench, okay? You place them on a bench and uh, place your piece on it, but still you can't create pressure. You're gonna break it. You're gonna break it 100%, okay? So it's not safe for the fragile pieces. And the solution is simple. You're not going to believe what the solution is. Solution is to use foam. But not just any foam. It's, it's got to be soft. And uh, what I'm using, I'm using foam made for the audio studio. Uh, maybe some of you involved in the audio recording or video recording and you watched probably on internet some guys and all the on the back you know they've got the whole wall is actually pretty much covered with that type of foam it reduces his on the microphone echo it just takes away the echo uh, it sounds much better but uh, what I like about it okay I like the anatomy of that foam just because of those ribs or whatever you call them okay so it's uh, really safe it's really soft and you can place that softly and i can create the pressure without the breaking and i uh, i hope you like that idea uh, also another tip if you want to uh, carve from the back side don't use big tools i mean it's uh, it's not good okay um, big tools create a lot of force and you're still able to break it it doesn't matter how soft foam is, you're still going to be breaking that stuff. Now, I'm using small tiny tools. In this case, that would be like a dockyard. It's just a brand, okay? But this one is a five millimeters. And you can attack. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you still have to hold it solidly. You still have to press it somewhat. But, you know, you can see it doesn't create a lot of pressure and little by little you can excavate from the back side and create beautiful 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 shadow okay smaller tools in that case would be just the solution i think it's going to help to all of us but i got some chips <laughs> with chips but that is the solution i'm using Okay, uh, obviously I do have, uh, uh, you know, like a studio set up and uh, a couple of walls I have covered. I just grabbed one of them and it works wonderful. And that is the tip for today. Let me see, let me show you uh, again uh, what is, um, you know, how it looks, how it's going to be. Like I said, there's going to be a second piece. So that is how it's supposed to look. Well, upside down, just like that. There's going to be some molding going on and goes that direction. Okay, let me see some uh, uh, comments. Uh, David saying it is for the soundproofing uh, room, and that is exactly what it is. Okay, okay, wonderful people. Thank you very much. I know today was short. I had a problem with my microphone what can you do sometimes you do have that problem i'll try to connect a little more often but now i gotta work i gotta work and uh, like i said i still have to concentrate on the last parts on the last parts which is gonna be 
those guys. And uh, for the members of my school, I don't think I'm gonna record uh, those last parts. It's the same idea what I showed previously. And uh, maybe I'll be able to make a picture later on and you'll, you will be able to see it. But for now, have a wonderful day. Uh, don't forget to hug someone, give a smile to someone, and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much.